Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I want to say to all of our Navy families who have lost loved ones, thank you for being here today. We grieve with you, and we owe you an explanation of what happened, and I know our leadership feels the same way. Uh, Admiral Richardson, in the last year, the Navy has had four incidents involving the loss of life or injury, and three of the four, okay. the ships involved were home ported overseas, in fact, all in the same port in Japan. GAO found that the Navy counts ships home ported overseas as being in, quote, permanent deployment status, resulting in fewer training hours for sailors. And in fact, in 2015, GAO found there were no dedicated training periods at all for ships home ported in Japan. The Navy concurred with the GAO's recommendations and reported that it had developed revised operational schedules. But as recently as August, that's two years after the report, August of this year, Pacific Fleet officials told GAO that the revised schedules were, quote, still under review. Now, Admiral Richardson, two years is a long time. So what's the holdup here? No, there's no excuse for that. Uh, we're, we're investigating how that uh, gap opened up. Um, I, I, there's, there's nothing uh, defensible I can say for that. Okay. I assume we're going to find a way to close this we are. quickly now? Absolutely. So let me just keep asking, though, about where things have gone wrong. At the time of their respective incidents, did the crews of the Fitzgerald and the Antietam and the McCain have up-to-date warfare certifications? Ma'am, many of them did not. Of the three, do you know how many had up-to-date well, uh, certifications? I can get you the exact number. There's a number of different certifications, uh, and I'll, I'll provide that uh, exact number for the record. But uh, all three of them, because it was pervasive in the uh, four deployed naval forces. Do, do you know offhand how many overseas home ported fleet, how much, what percentage of our overseas home ported fleet currently has expired warfare certifications? There are, uh, I, uh, just about every ship has some element of their certification expired. And uh, that can be managed if it's one thing and uh, uh, an advanced warfare mission, for instance. You just don't assign them to that mission. Uh, where it becomes uh, troublesome is that if it becomes too many areas, and particularly in those areas that uh, are directly related to safe and effective operation, the fundamentals. Right. And so that's when it becomes of uh, great concern. So it, it, the GAO reported just last month that 37% of cruisers and destroyers Home ported in Japan had expired certifications in 2017. Does that sound about right to you? I'll leave it to Mr. Pendleton to do the math, but that does sound about right. Okay, so let me just ask Admiral Richardson, do you believe it's irresponsible to allow our sailors to deploy repeatedly on cruises without the training they need to ensure the safety of the ship and its crew? Yeah, what, what had happened in those areas, ma'am, is that when, I mean, the, the team out there was conscious that these uh, certifications were uh, expiring. And uh, it's a bit like your driver's license expiring. It may not necessarily mean that you don't know how to drive anymore. It's just, you know, there's that expired. Uh, however, we do need to recognize that those certifications mean something. Yes. And you need to go back and recertify. And so... Uh, what had happened instead is that they would do an evaluation just like I discussed and said, okay, well, the certification has expired. Uh, we're not going to get a time to get on board and do the certification for some time. And so we'll do a, uh, a, a discussion or an administrative review to extend that. It was called a risk mitigation plan. Uh, that became pretty pervasive. And so, uh, so it was this kind of boiling frog scenario that over time, uh, over the last two years really, uh, became uh, acute. And so to answer your question, yes, no, is it irresponsible? Yes, it is irresponsible. But I just wanted to give you a sense for how that uh, came about. And I appreciate that. And what I'm hearing you say is that you're conducting a thorough review. This is not going to happen in the future. We'll get this right. Thank you.